Universities in South Africa have remained shut for a second week as protests on campuses across the country make it impossible to continue with classes. Now, students say they will only stop when the government gives in to their demands for free tertiary education. And as Andre Pierre Duplessis reports, the protests now pose a risk to South Africa's economy. South African police are fighting running battles with students. For the past two weeks, they've blockaded roads, damaged property, and brought universities to a standstill. From 1994 until now, 700 billion has been wasted on corruption. So we are saying as students, you know, uh, there is money in this country. It's just that, you know, the, the government, you know, is using it for corruption. So let them divert this money that they use for corruption, you know, to fund, you know, uh, free education, you know. They are angry at the government refusing to offer free tertiary education. Get rid of this thing that education is a privilege. Education should not be a privilege in South Africa. Everybody must have the right to study, you know. You have the, the missing mental who do not qualify for loans, even in banks or financial aid. Where else should they go, you know. We are tired, so we are saying the system must listen. But the protests are now threatening various sectors of South Africa's economy. Most at risk is the health sector, as 2,600 health science graduates are due to start their mandatory community service at hospitals across the country in January. The same goes for students sitting time-sensitive exams, like accounting and law students, who will most likely lose a year's income if they can't complete board exams. At the University of Cape Town, graduation ceremonies have been cancelled and the university may now have to close for the rest of the year as there won't be enough time to complete the curriculum. And if they cannot start, then they are the ones who are suffering as well as the businesses and industries that employ them. And it's important to emphasise that, that the ones who suffer most are the students from the lowest income. Students from high income families can survive for another few months on their family's income. They can live at home. Uh, it's the students who are indebted, the students who have job promises or contracts with the people who've given them bursaries. Those are the students who will suffer most if we haven't finished the academic year. On top of lost lecture times and damage to property, the protests are costing each student around $1,000 a month in living expenses. Although President Jacob Zuma has called on his ministers to bring an end to the protests, it's students themselves who may need convincing. Andre Pietro Plessis, TLT World.